What's up everybody? In this video, I want to show you the adventure of building this hang printer. Along with some of the problems I faced in calibration and setup, as well as some modifications I designed to get it to work better for me. At the end of the video, I'll show you some time lapses of building these beautiful vases. So you'll definitely want to stick around for that. Finally, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. So what is the hang printer? The hang printer is an open source 3D printer that was invented by Torbjörn. The beautiful thing about this printer is that it uses your room as the frame of the printer. So you're basically limited by the size of your room in terms of your, your print volume, among other things. But the cool thing about this is that all the electronics and gears and motors are all on the roof. And then you have your build plate along with three anchors on the floor and your nozzle is sitting in the middle of a triangle that is suspended by cables throughout this whole thing. So it's a really beautiful design and when I first heard about this I had to build one. And my first attempt was about a year ago, kind of unsuccessful. <laughs> ah. I tried multiple times to get this printer work with varying degrees of success. Luckily, I'm very hard-headed and I guess I kind of enjoy the torture that comes along with building this, these machines. So recently I decided to give it another try. I noticed there were a lot of layer skipping, layer skipping on the part when I was trying to 3D print the calibration cube. Uh, you could see the layers shifting between each other. The first thing in tackling this problem was redesigning this hardware. I created this bracket so it would double support the gears as well as adjust the motor to gear spacing. This cable guide is adjustable after being bolted onto the wood and it helps guide the cable so it doesn't fall off the pulley. It was almost emotionally difficult taking apart the old printer um, I put so much time into it, but I had a good plan and I was um, really excited to get it to work. the printer a little test run on the bench before putting it up just to make sure everything was working fine because you don't want to be trying to debug something that's over your head and when I was doing this test run I realized how loud this printer is <laughs> I originally wired it to work with the um, Mechaduinos that you see sitting up here, um, but these didn't end up working because I had a problem flashing them. So I think I'm gonna clean this up by using a cable with four conductors that will go to each um, stepper motor.
think my roommates were as excited as I was to see the sprinter in action. Oh my god. It's gonna hang from the ceiling? Uh huh. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? That's uh, a little scary. So in order to get the printer to hang on the ceiling, I created these two brackets that would allow me to use one hand. It would basically free up one hand for me so then I could screw in um, permanently the printer onto the roof. Uh, this gave me a little bit of trouble because I made the brackets a little too small so they had to be um, pretty much perfect dead on for the thing to slide in um, so next time i would i would prefer to make them a little bigger to give me a little you know space to work with Now comes a surprisingly relaxing part, at least for me, which is uh, figuring out the, the cabling. I was trying to reuse a lot of the cabling from the last attempt, and so it was all kind of messed up. I just put some good music on and went at it. After the madness of making the hardware, uh, installing it onto the plate, and you know making sure everything works and cables and all that, I calibrated the printer, which is the first worst part of this build. Um, I didn't spend too much time on this, just because I wanted to see the printer move again. It was a whole year since since I saw it last. Kind of like a little sanity check and uh, I decided to do the infamous calibration cube. And in this attempt, it came out really well. There were no skip steps. Um, it, it was an actual cube. I think I have it right here. So, the first, the first layer kind of messed up, but in terms of like the walls and um, the shape, it, it was pretty good, better than last time. I was starting to get confident with this printer, and so I tried a 14 inch diameter vase. This started to show some signs of skipping, so I went with a smaller vase, and this came out much better. Um, but at the end, it, the nozzle got clogged, and I had to um, take it apart and unclog it. I did some research on this problem and it looks like I was pushing too much uh, plastic through the extruder. And so I backed it off for the next few prints and it turned out to be a lot better. Finally, after the uh, that those last two print attempts, I took the calibration step more seriously. This time I used levels and lasers. and spend a good amount of time on that. Um, and the results were fantastic.
looks like the poem was this gear here. It just uh, gave out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna loosen this guy and see what happened on that on that thread. Hmm. It's loose in there. That's one of the most satisfying parts of this whole thing. It's not bad. This is a satisfactory length. Hey guys, so just finished this 14 hour print and it came out um, really good for the first attempt. It's a 0% infill um, with one wall thickness on the outside. That's why you can kind of see a lot of these holes here. So next time I think I would add a little bit more uh, infill or just create multiple layers and I think that should really help. Also, the model wasn't perfectly designed for self-supporting structures, so that's something that I would change as well. You can kind of see that on the bottom here. Uh, but other than that, it printed it pretty well. It was a long print and left it overnight, and I'm glad it turned out to be a shape. So there you have it. That's the hang printer with some modifications that I made and some of the, the parts that I printed. Some of the things that I would have done differently is probably use belts instead of gears uh, on the drivetrain. Uh, it makes things quieter, less backlash, and it's just an overall better construction. And that's what Torbjorn is using on the version four ink printer, so I would definitely check that out. He solved a lot of the problems from the version three, and um, it's looking like a really good printer. The other thing that I would have done differently, which I did change by the last print, is change the motor controllers. So I used the TMC 2209 silent steppers, and they make a world of a difference for the sound that this printer makes. Before it sounded like a giant subwoofer on the roof, and now it's extremely quiet. The only sound that it's making is probably from the gears. Uh, so I hope you liked the video. Please like and subscribe because that will help motivate me to make more videos like this. It means a lot to me. I have a few more videos that I want to do with this hang printer. Uh, so stay tuned.